So I'm making this video for memories, um, but today is 5 2020 and I just made my last student loan payment. So do you know what that means? Three, two, one. I'm debt free. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, guys. So what's up, guys? It's Janetta from Cash and Curls. And today I'm about to take you guys back and we're going to recapture my debt-free journey. Today we are going down memory lane and I am going to share some never before seen footage and some clips and photos of what my debt-free journey was like during the 31 months I was on my debt-free journey. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to be giving you guys the real and the raw footage of what my life was like from 2017 all the way into 2020. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my debt-free journey and how I pay off $57,747 worth of debt in 31 months, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So I feel like it only makes sense for me to take you guys back, give you guys some context and a little backstory on how I accumulated over $57,000 worth of debt. So in 2012, I had graduated high school and I got accepted to attend a private institution. And at this private university, um, back then tuition was roughly $30,000 a year. And um, I went there. I went to this school with no financial plan. I didn't have a 529 or ESA to fund college. I was just trying to make it through as a first generation college student. So during my first year of college, I got a lot of scholarships and I didn't have to take out student loans. But during my sophomore year of college, um, the scholarships began to reduce and my family really couldn't afford for me to go to that university. So we began to take out student loans. But while I was in college, I continued to rack up debt. So during my second year of college, I got my first car and car payments started to, to roll in. Um, during my third year of college, I began to enter the world of credit card debt. <laughs> I was heavily influenced by family and friends to open up credit cards at the age of 18, 19 years old. And honestly, back then, I was never really comfortable with having credit cards, but I was heavily influenced by those around me to get a credit card, and I, and I eventually, honestly, just caved in and got the cards. So my first credit card was the Pink Victoria's Secret credit card and my cousin and my sister actually influenced me to get this card. Um, the second card that I got was the Discover credit card and honestly, this credit card came about because one of my friends from college recommended and like really persuaded me that I needed this credit card. In actuality, this person only wanted me to get a credit card so that they can get type of reward bonus or some type of referral um, money for recommending me to join the Discover credit card. So that's how I ended up getting those two credit cards. By the time I graduated college in 2016, I had roughly $57,000 worth of debt. So I had all the student loans I took out, I had the two credit cards, and I had a card payment. 2016, I would like to call that the YOLO year. So this was the year that in my mind, I was just like, you only live once. Like do what you like to do because tomorrow's not promised. And in actuality, that is true. But the way I was living it, it was not true. Okay. So in 2016, I had graduated with my bachelor's degree and I had obtained my dream job of being a teacher. So during my first year of teaching, I literally did everything that I wanted. I traveled frequently, I was shopping online and in the mall like every single weekend. I was going out to eat every Friday and Saturday and I was just not caring about the debt that I had. Like. I paid my bills on time, but I was only sending um, the minimum balance or I was only making the minimum payments for all of my debts. I wasn't trying to send extra money to my debt. So my whole focus in 2016 was to honestly look like I was successful. So 2017, I like to call this the year of the mindset shift. So in 2017, my mindset completely shifted. It was July of 2017. I had just got back from a vacation from Orlando 
which I had a blast at. But after that vacation, I decided to change my whole life. I decided to change the way I ate. I cut out all meat. I was a vegan for a short period of time and then I eventually became a vegetarian. I changed my spending habits. I changed the way that I engaged socially. 2017, after this vacation, I was just tired of trying to be someone I was actually not. I was done. Fast forward to September 23rd, 2017. I was scrolling on Facebook and some of you guys may know this story, but I was scrolling on Facebook and I came across this video by MJ Harris titled, Don't Go Broke Trying to Look Rich. And basically in this video, MJ was just sharing how people who tend to look very flashy tend to have the least amount of assets. And I was like, oh my goodness this is me like i am trying to look like i'm successful but in actuality i am broke so i was convicted by this message and this video literally changed my life and it changed my financial future so a few days later one of my favorite youtubers at the time had shared how she was budgeting and how she was using cash envelopes to help her with her budget so that's how i got connected with dave ramsey through that youtuber um, i literally fell in love with his principles and his practices and i was literally watching and listening to his show day in and day out so first thing in the morning while i was showering i was listening to his radio show at night i literally was listening to debt free screams before bed during that time i decided that i was going to make the commitment to start my debt-free journey. Let's go ahead and dive into the journey. At the time of my debt-free journey, the pink credit card was $207.18. The, the Discover credit card was $958.88. My car loan at the time was $6,499.97. And my student loans were $50,000. $81.36. October of 2017, I had purchased The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey and I read it in less than a week. October 2017, I started my first budget. And let me just tell you, I got it all wrong. Like I literally didn't know what I was doing. I didn't allocate enough money for certain categories, but your girl was trying, okay? October, I began to list out my debts and start my debt snowball. So what I did was, I got a piece of red construction paper and I had a black Sharpie and I literally wrote out my debts from smallest to largest. And I posted that up in my room and I was just focused. I was ready to get started on my debt-free journey. So on October 6, 2017, I had officially paid off that $200 credit card from Pink. November 2017. So this was my second attempt at budgeting. Once again, I didn't get it right. I got it wrong again. I was still struggling, but I continued to remain consistent. And in 2007 and in November of 2017, I officially paid off my Discover credit card, which was roughly about $900. $58. At this point, I was like, wow, like I could actually do this. Like I got two credit cards paid off in under two months. Like who is this girl? <laughs> December, um, I realized that I wanted to follow this Dave Ramsey plan to AT. Like he recommends that you have a thousand dollars in your savings account and your starter emergency fund. And at that time, I had saved like the most amount of money I've ever saved in my life, which was $4,000. And I was just so hesitant to bump that down to $1,000. But I made the decision in January of 2018 to knock down um, my emergency fund to just $1,000. And I used that extra $3,000 to help me pay off my car loan. Let's fast forward to 2018. So 2018 was the year of commitment for me. So in January of 2018, your girl was singing, I ain't got no car no, I ain't got no car no. <laughs> I was like hyped because I had officially paid off my car loan. At that point, I had already attacked three debts in four months and I was ready to go. Like I was like, let's go. Like I could honestly do this. So a few days later, I soon realized that my next goal was going to be to attack that $50,000 student loan. And if I'm honest with you guys, 
I was just like, I need to come up with a game plan because I am not going to experience quick wins like I did with the credit cards and the car loan. Like, I'm going to be on my journey for a long time and I need to stay motivated. February 2018, I was online and I came across a debt-free tracker. So I downloaded this debt-free tracker, I printed it out, and I began to use this to track my progress of me paying off my student loans. During this time, I started to chart how much I was paying towards my student loans each month. And at the time, back in 2018, I was receiving like these little magnetic calendars in the mail um, from a local insurance company. And I would literally, every single month, write out how much I sent to student loans. And you know, some months it was $1,000, $2,000, 3000 when I got a refund check. But I literally charted out how much I was sending towards my student loan payments each month. And this is what honestly kept me going, charting it on these magnetic calendars and actually using that debt free tracker so I can see the growth over time. 2018, I was committed. Like I was all in, like I was sacrificing so much saying no, living frugally, I literally was committed to this program and nothing and no one can get in the way of that. I'm honestly just gonna let my journey unfold in images and videos. I'm literally gonna show you guys month to month my progress of paying off $57,747 worth of debt. So sit back and enjoy and I'll be sure to pop in and kind of highlight certain things along the way. I started to have a little bit more fun the first couple of months I was very strict and I didn't do anything like I really didn't have fun in 2017 to like mid 2018 because I was just so focused on sticking to the plan and sending any extra money towards my debt in the summer of 2018 I actually went to a few concerts I went to the on the run tour I went to the J. Cole concert and I traveled to Detroit for a two-day quick little getaway um, but I did all of these things on a budget. In October of 2018 I celebrated my first year on my debt-free journey. I decided to actually cut up my credit cards so for a whole entire year I had my credit cards stashed away in my drawer um, in my desk and I just held on to them in case I needed them but at that moment I decided that I am no longer gonna live with a credit card like I'm not going to rely on a credit card to save me and to help me live out my life so in 2018 I decided to cut up my credit cards cut it cut it cut it <laughs> ever since then I never looked back I never had another credit card and I don't plan on using another credit card to fund anything in my life so if you needed a sign this is your sign that you can live without a credit card okay <laughs> this moment I decided that I'm going to use another marker to track my progress so I decided to switch over to a gold marker to represent year two of my debt-free journey This was the year of creativity, this was the year of sacrifice for me, and this was the year that I remained persistent. I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, in August of 2019, I had roughly $15,000 of student loan debt left 
and I honestly was pumped I was like yes yes I am like making it like for so long I was seeing my student loan balance be, be in like the upper 30s 20,000 like it was just so refreshing to see that my balance was getting closer to ten thousand dollars to five thousand dollars and then eventually it was gonna reach zero so I was committed October 2019 I celebrated my second year of being on my debt-free journey and honestly this moment right here was the hardest moment for me if I'm honest with you guys um in my mind back in 2017 when i started this journey all i kept hearing was that most people get out of debt within two years and at this moment this was my two-year mark and i was not debt free i still had roughly ten thousand dollars left in student loans at this moment i wanted to scream that i was debt free but the math wasn't mathing like my debt to income ratio didn't match like mathematically it was not possible for me to pay off fifty seven thousand dollars worth of debt in two years during this moment i honestly felt like a failure like at that time i couldn't see how much progress i've made i couldn't see that i had paid off over forty thousand dollars worth of debt at that moment i could only see that i didn't accomplish this goal in two years and if I'm being honest with you guys, I contemplated on stopping my debt-free journey. Like I was going to throw in the towel because I didn't reach debt freedom in exactly two years. I don't know who this is for, but I just want to say, do not give up because something took longer than you expected it to take. It takes longer than what you expected. It doesn't mean that you're a failure and it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen for you. So continue on with your journey and do not throw in the tile because your journey may take a little bit longer than average, okay? Continue to stick with your journey. Stop putting these hard deadlines on yourself and just continue to focus on progress. Look at how much progress you have made, okay? Don't do what I did. Don't contemplate on stopping your journey. Actually continue to press through and make a commitment to yourself that I'm gonna stick through with this journey no matter how long it takes, okay? So 2020 was the year of the finish line for me. Kept um, making payments, I kept with the course, and in 2020, March of 2020, I decided that I wanted to take Financial Peace University. Um, so I was super excited when I found out that my local church was offering Financial Peace University. So I hurried up and signed up for a class and my class started in the beginning of March and then the pandemic happened mid, mid March. And you know, the whole world shifted. Many people lost their jobs, many people were struggling financially, and I was honestly thankful and blessed that I still had my job. And during this time, I took advantage of no entrance occurring on my student loans. So when the pandemic was happen happening, student loan entrance had paused. Entrance wasn't accumulating on my student loan balance every single day. So I took advantage of that. On March 20th, 2020, I officially became debt free. Like, I think it was around 8 p.m. I had waited till I got off of work and I sat upstairs in my room and I officially clicked the button to pay off my student loans. And this is just a short little clip of me celebrating this huge moment in my life. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye, Sally Mae. I'm never paying you again. <laughs> Officially debt free. Yeah, so that was how my debt free journey um, went. That was my life for 31 months. I decided to record this video honestly to inspire someone. I wanted to show you guys the real raw footage of what my life was like for those long 31 months. And during my debt-free journey, I actually love reading stories and watching debt-free screams of people who look like me. People who were people of color, who worked in similar career fields as I did, and people who had some, some of the same struggles as I did. 
So it is my hope that this video inspired you to start your debt-free journey. So if you are ready to start your debt-free journey, type in the comments ready. If you're ready, I do have a few resources for you that I want to share to help you jumpstart your debt-free journey. First and foremost is my monthly budget template. Like I stated, when I first started off, I had no clue what I was doing. I literally had a piece of notebook paper and a pen just trying to write out my expenses and kind of guess what I was actually spending my money on. Now, I want you to start one step ahead of me. So be sure to download my monthly budget template by clicking the link down in my description box. And let me just tell you, it's for free and I give you guys a lot of good content. So check that out. Secondly, I do want to highlight that during my debt-free journey, I use cash for majority of my expenses. So if you are looking to get into the cash envelope world, I do have a few videos here on YouTube all on cash envelopes. Be sure to check that out and be sure to check out cash withdrawal slip. That link can be found in my description box as well. And this is also a freebie, okay? And lastly, the thing that really helped me pay off $50,000 in student loans was a debt-free tracker. So I have a debt-free tracker that you can download by clicking the link in my um, description box. And with this debt-free tracker, I can guarantee that it's gonna keep you motivated. It kept me motivated for a long 31 months and it will keep you motivated on your debt-free journey. Token of appreciation for watching this video, be sure to use the code CCP10 to get 10% off your debt-free trackers. The link is down in my description box, okay? So once again, if you are ready to start your debt-free journey, type in the comments ready. If you are not ready to start your debt-free journey, I wanna know why. Let me know down in the comments what is holding you back from starting your debt-free journey. So that is all that I have for you guys today. Never forget that you can win with money and I am rooting for you. Until next time, friends. Bye. <laughs>